Hey guys, I have here an LSI 9207-8E. This is a SAS controller. It's a PCIe Gen 3 SAS controller. It has two external ports, that's the 8E portion. And this controller supports up to a whopping 1024 SAS or SATA endpoint devices. I've spent a lot of time working with the LSI 9200. That is a fantastic rock solid card. However, that's a PCIe Gen 2 card. And like I said, this is a PCI Gen 3 card, which is nearly double the PCIe bandwidth. In this video, we're gonna focus primarily on how to update the firmware on this card. Now, if you have the 9207-8E, the external version that I have here, the only option you have for yours is IT or integrated target mode. If you have the 9207-8I that would have the internal ports, uh, you can run that in either IT or IR integrated RAID mode. Regardless of the controller version you have or the mode you want to operate it at, you most likely want to update the firmware to the latest release, when you receive your controller. This video will walk you through that process. It's not nearly as intimidating as I thought it was at first. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is head on over to the Broadcom website here. Uh, Broadcom is the company that owns LSI now, and they have a pretty good knowledge base article published explaining the various firmware options and links to download them. The firmware we're looking for is the IT firmware or integrated target, and that's basically going to pass all of the disks through as individual disks to the host, it's known as JBOD mode or just a bunch of disks. It's not going to have any onboard RAID functionality. Any RAID volumes you set up would probably be done through a software RAID on the operating system. That is opposed to IR mode or integrated RAID where the hardware on the actual uh, HBA host bus adapter is going to handle your RAID at a hardware level. IT mode is what we want and I think what most people are going to be after. Hardware RAID is not as popular these days as it used to be. Uh, and you see the explanations here. The 9207-8E is the card that we have. The only option for that card is the IT firmware. If you have the 9207-8I, you can do either IT mode or IR mode. So we're gonna go ahead and download the 8E option. You'll want to read through this license agreement because we know everybody always reads the license agreements. Uh, and if you agree with the license agreement, go ahead and check the box and it will proceed with your download. All right, so this is the zip file it downloaded. You can see we've got a variety of utilities and firmware in here. Before we can do anything with that, we need to prepare our USB drive. For the USB flash drive, we wanna make this a bootable disk. So I've got my two gig USB flash drive. This drive's gotta be at least 15 years old at this point and it's still going strong. So uh, boot selection, I'm going to do free DOS, uh, MBR, BIOS. And for the file system, I typically go with FAT32. Go ahead and click start. And it'll give you a warning telling you you're going to destroy all of the data on the device. Once that's completed, we can go ahead and open our flash drive here. We're gonna create a new folder and just call it LSI. Now over here in the zip file we downloaded, we're using a DOS boot disk. So we're gonna select the uh, SAS to flash DOS version and we'll copy over that executable. Uh, we also want the firmware folder. This is the 92078E IT mode. Go ahead and copy that over as well. And if you're going to flash a BIOS image to it, you can go in the SAS BIOS folder and grab the mptsas2.rom. Lastly, you'll probably want the SAS to flash reference guide here. All of the commands I'm going to be using can be found in this reference guide. And this reference guide actually goes into pretty good detail on the commands, the various arguments, and the processes of flashing your card. With all these files copied over, we can go ahead and eject our USB drive. All right, so over here at the server, I did remove the low profile bracket from this car just so I can fit it in the available slots I have. Uh, this is a fairly small one use server. And I'll just insert that card into the X16 riser here. And then one thing I love about super micro motherboards is most of them have a USB port on the motherboard itself. So all I need to do is plug in that boot drive and any port will do. It can also be on the back of the server. Now we're ready to go ahead and turn on our server. I'm at the remote console here, the HTML5 IKVM, power control and power on. So the first thing I'll usually do is go into the BIOS here under the boot tab and make sure you're set for legacy or BIOS mode. Um, dual mode can also work, but I find it's easiest just to set the thing to legacy. For the flashing process, then you can go ahead and set it back to whatever you need after the fact. So boot mode is legacy, go ahead and save and exit. We're gonna press F11 here to enter the boot menu. And the item we want here, I'm gonna select 0.00. .00. I don't know why it shows up like that, but basically you are selecting the USB flash drive you have plugged in as the boot device. And it boots up to DOS pretty quickly. So we're gonna CD into our LSI directory that we created. 
do a DIR, make sure our files are there. So we have the SAS to flash flashing utility. We have the 9207 firmware and we have the MPT SAS 2 BIOS ROM. So the first thing we'll do is a SAS to flash and do a slash list all. All right, so I've got one controller installed. You can see it's identified as a SAS 2308. Uh, it is number zero. And the firmware it has currently is 16.0. And again, we are flashing 20.0, so that's a four version difference. So if you have multiple controllers installed, you'll obviously want to pay attention to this number here, this controller number. So the next step is we want to erase everything on the card. Uh, and to do that, we'll do SAS to flash. We'll do dash C zero, which is controller zero. We'll do dash O for advanced options. We'll do dash E for erased, and we want erase mode six. And that can be found in the documentation here. You can see we have the various erase modes. Erase mode six is clean the flash, everything except for the manufacturer area. Go ahead and press enter. All right, so now we're gonna do another SAS to flash, dash C zero, controller zero, dash F for firmware, and we're gonna select the 9207.bin file. Next, we can do a dash B and select the BIOS ROM, which was the MPT SAS 2.ROM file. Now, I'm actually not going to specify the BIOS ROM for this, and I'm simply going to flash the firmware. If you choose to flash the BIOS, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer at startup because you're waiting for all those, you know, that BIOS to load and all those startup messages to proceed before your operating system boots. I don't need it, so I'm not going to flash it. Uh, so that choice is yours. So like I said, we have SAS to flash, dash C, controller zero, dash F, and then our firmware. All right, process completed successfully. Now if we do a SAS to flash, dash list all, all right, there we go. So we see controller zero is flashed to firmware 20.0. So that's all it takes. It's very straightforward. A lot of it is just knowing the commands and knowing the process. This is probably the third or fourth time I've run through it at this point, and it definitely helps to have this document handy. I know a lot of times when you're reading online, people say run this command, run that command, but they're not really explaining what the command does. And that's where this document comes into play because like I said, they did a very good job of documenting all of these arguments and all of these processes. All right, so there we go. Our controller is updated to IT mode version 20.0. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Any questions or comments, you can leave those. Otherwise, please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.